So it's been a while since I did a video. Been busy with other stuff, mainly car problems. But uh, and there hasn't really been anything to work on. You know, it's holidays; nobody's doing anything. Hopefully, after uh, after Christmas, everybody will throw all their old crap out on the street, and we can go pick some of it and see if we can fix it, or maybe find stuff that just works. But anyway, I figured I'd do this little video here. I was going through some junk bins the other day, and uh, turns out some of it's not junk. Seems like lately I've been seeing on YouTube that uh, retro computing has been taking off like a rocket. And I uh, found this little guy. This used to be one of my main machines, I believe. Back probably around... Oh, what, 99, 2000, 2001 maybe? Hell, maybe as far back as 98, I can't remember. But, uh, might recognize this form factor here. And there's a uh, slot one, it's a Pentium 3800. Uh, it's 100 megahertz, I think it's an E or an EB, I can't remember. It's uh, fully maxed out on RAM, 700 and I think 86 meg, I think. And this is a A bit BH6. I believe these are fairly uh, highly sought after now in the uh, retro community for retro computing. Very stable. They got the uh, 440BX chipsets. Super stable. Can never remember having any blue screens on this machine. All the capacitors are still in good working order because this was just before the capacitor plague from hell started. I believe uh, Asus is competitor to this board. I might have had one. I think I sold it, but uh, I believe it was the uh, Asus P2B was the uh, competitor to the BH6. But, it's been sitting in the closet in a tub with other boards for years and years and years. I have no idea if it still works. One thing I did do is I pulled the battery out of it when I put it away so the battery wouldn't explode. So. This was the end of real computers right here. We had ISO slots. You didn't have onboard audio. None of that bull crap. You had USB 1.1. Literally the beginning of USB. You still have parallel ports and serial ports, you know, unlike today's weenie computers. And uh, PS2 ports. Matter of fact, I believe this machine can't even boot from the uh, from the USB. I think you can only boot from the IDE and floppy. So yeah, I got a ISA, plenty of uh, PCI slots. You got your AGP slot there. I think it's a 2X, I believe. dusty in there. Looks like the bearings are still pretty good though. Hopefully this memory is still good. <laughs> I may have to pop and reseat all of it. So I was thinking we'll see if it works. Before I get this old motherboard box out here for just something to something to use to see what we can do with it. So I think we'll put this on it for video, just to test. I believe this will work. I think this is an AGP 8X card, but I think it'll go all the way down to 2. It's a uh, GeForce 4... What is it? A 440MX. Yeah, AGP 8X. So it'll only run at like 2, I think, on this board. But who cares, just as long as it works. No bad capacitors on that. And I think for audio, we'll uh, put this old bad boy in there. This is a Sound Blaster AW64. This is not the gold version. The gold version, of course, had all the gold plating and it had the uh, RCA jacks on the end. This is the just regular one. Doesn't have the uh, 
extra memory for the wavetables. But still, it was a very good car in its day. I think some people might prefer the original Sound Blasters, but there's a, was it a CT4520? So I think we'll do that for audio. And, oh, what else we got over here? Sorry, I'm having to reach across my couch. Uh, Alright, be supported by Windows XP. I think we'll put this uh, Realtek card in here. I have a bunch of Linksys cards, but of course you have to go fly in the drivers for them. XP SP3 might have the driver for that built in. 8139C was used just about in everything. And the one thing I'm probably not going to put in it. But uh, I might, because I think this is ATA 33. I think this is even pre ATA 66. Another highly sought after part, so I've been told. I have tons of these sitting in boxes. Because every machine I built back in the day had these in them. I've got an Ultra 66. I've got a couple of 100s. I think I have two of these Ultra 133 TX2 cards. I have no idea if that's the current bias or not for it. I know Phil's computer lab, he loves these cards. He's always updating the firmware on them. I assume it still works. Has it been ran in a while? Of course, XP does not have drivers for this built in. You'd have to have a either build an image with InLight that had the driver already included or dig up a floppy drive and a floppy disk. And I don't have any floppy disk. I have plenty of drives laying around, but no disk. And uh, I've got to find a USB keyboard or a, a PS2 keyboard. I've got a PS2 mouse. And I think we'll throw. I think we'll throw this old dog on it. This would have been about period correct. It's a 10 2 AA. Western Digital 10 gigabytes. Noisy as hell. And uh, there was a big problem with these drives. I worked for a company one time and the. Uh, crew that I was working with while I was working on uh, upgrading and doing things to the workstations they were doing the uh, server back in and I believe it was a Novell server and I can't remember if they were going to upgrade Novell or they were going to actually do a Linux thing on it or whatever but anyway they had I think they had two of these in a raid array early raid and uh, these drives have firmware problem and they will fail <laughs> Um, I don't know, I have two of these and I can't remember if these have the fixed firmware or not. There's the date on it, 1999. Surprised if it'll even work or not. But uh, yeah, these drives failed and they failed on that machine about two or three days after. Uh, they did whatever migration work they did on the server and it ended up costing them a fortune because they had to go in and do data, they had to send the drives off to data recovery might have been drive savers or something like that to uh, recover the data off the drives needless to say that was pretty embarrassing for them I wasn't with them not long after that because they got you know it was during the uh, during the end of the dot com boom I guess and they were got overextended and that was that so I think for power supply we'll use this old uh, Thermaltech TR2430. This thing ran in a office machine, I believe it might have been an office server um, that I had. And this thing ran for two solid years and never was turned off. <laughs> and yet the fans are still good in it. I haven't cracked it up to look at the capacitors, I probably should. But the thing still works. It's got a lot of the old connectors on it that you need. Just got your breakaway there so you can do 20 or 24. And it's got SATA if you want to do SATA, but biggest thing for older stuff, retro stuff, plenty of Mullix connectors. Gotta have them. Alright, I'm gonna throw some parts together here and let's see if this thing will boot. 
right, so uh, here we are put together. Our little uh, redneck test bench here. I was gonna try and use this Realtek card, but this Realtek card, with it plugged into the board, it won't even post. So, pretty sure this is uh, was probably out of a lightning machine. Well, let's see, I'm gonna have to reset the BIOS. Yeah, see, it was a 533 E. <laughs> it's running at a uh, running at what 66 instead of 100. Let's see if we can get into this old BIOS. Let us zoom out a bit. Eh? These boards, if you do, if you don't come in here and set secondary mash or wherever your CD-ROM drive is, if you don't set it to auto here, it will never detect it. Something I learned a long time ago with these boards. I don't know why I'm doing this because if I power it off, I'm just going to lose it anyway. But. What is today the, uh, hell, I should know, it's almost Christmas. It's the 19th. Yeah, let's go down, we're going to go up. At least this board was uh, Y2K compliant. Enough. No floppy drive. Set it to boot CD first. Pretty sure there's nothing on this other hard drive. By the way, this is that uh, HP marker that had that. Uh, Used link and blow up in it. Been running fine ever since. Yeah. Processor number feature. Y'all remember this? When the serial numbers on the chips come out, everybody went, everybody went ape shit about it. Oh, they're gonna snoop on what we're doing. Blah blah. blah. I mean, you want snooping? Best snooping device ever built, right here. Knows where you are all the time. So this machine was cool enough to have a uh, system monitoring set up to use the CPU fan. So it's running 4,000 RPM, which it probably is being so little. And the OS isn't booted up on it, so... Most of this stuff we could leave alone. It's not going to matter. One thing about these, though, you can get in them and tune the hell out of them. Yeah, 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 we don't care. We're just testing, so. No fault controller, we're not using serial ports. Parallel port just saves on our cubes from back in the day if you had Windows 98 or 95. I guess this would have been what a Windows 98 error board because it's the it bias dates from like the year 2000 or something. Now it should come up as a P3800. Focus camera. P3800. Yep. 
620 of 2000. And there shouldn't be anything out here. Yep. Yeah, I had to go find some of my old 40 conductor cables because this motherboard, if you use the standard controller, the uh, regular IDE controllers, it will not accept 80 conductor cables with that block out because there's a pin there. So, But the Ultra 133 would take it. Let's see if we can get this other Windows XP just to boot. Amazing ruins after all these years, though. Oh, listen to that. It's one of those, uh, one of those, uh, it's a light on drive, but it came out of an e machine. Boot. This must be a 48 or 52X. Loud. Come on, you can do it. I don't know. Super slow. Alright, I'm going to let Windows install. I'm uh, not going to bore y'all with sitting here wasting time and uh, memory card space just to install Windows. So we'll be back when Windows is installed. Alright, had a little trouble with Windows XP and uh, <laughs> that was kind of my dumb fault. I had to swap video cards. This is a uh, FX 5200 128 mode. It's going to use the 440, and I kept getting a blue screen with the NVIDIA drivers, and I'm like, what is going on? And I got to looking at the card, and I realized, oh, there's a capacitor missing off this card, because I robbed it to put it on a motherboard, to fix the motherboard. Durr. So, put this one in. This one has a, uh, has a bad fan, but it still works. So uh, all it is put XP on it and the updates and CPU Z just to show that it still works after all these years. Super noisy fan. Eight hundred megahertz. I think you could put a. Uh, I think the biggest they made in slot one was a gigahertz. And they were only uh, 100 megahertz front side bus. I think you can overclock this board to 133. I've never tried it. Never had a chip to put on it to try it with. Because I know they made some. Uh, if you have a socket adapter, where you can put socket 370 chips on it, you can get those. I think up to like one what was it 1.11 or something like that. Was the top out of the copper mine at 133 front side. Boot up. Old slow caviar over here. What a terrible boot time, but. Be good for old gaming, that's about the extent of it though. Man, yeah, listen to that fan. <laughs> it's terrible. So, yeah, we got our uh, 768 Mega Ram, like 600 dollars free. If you was to put like the old ESR uh, extended service release version of Firefox on here and get online with it, it would just bog down and nothing and chew up all the RAM. 
like I say, these are, if you want a retro game on one of these, great for that, but don't even, don't even bother putting them on the internet anymore. Fire up CPU-Z. So there it is, the uh, Pinion 3E, copy mine, 800 megahertz, got a MMX and SSE, you might, might, could get that to run Windows 7, it might would do it, painfully, but it might would do it. <laughs> well, 256k of cash. Best thing they ever did was integrate the cache into the chip. I remember when it used to be separate. Yeah, I don't think A bit's in business anymore. They've been out of business for quite a while. There's a the BIOS date. That was the newest BIOS. Well, that does have uh, AGP3. Could have swore it was AGP version 2. Seven hundred and sixty-eight mega RAM. Woo woo. Pre DDR. Pre dual channel. Back when you could just slop whatever RAM you wanted in there, and it just not pretty much worked. There's the uh, FX fifty-two hundred. It's a PMY card. Or a budget. Let's budget. Oh, it's so slow it won't even register. <laughs> oh, it's a point one. A whole point one. Oh, point two. <laughs> yep, a whopping point two. It's craziness. So yeah, this will probably be my uh, last video for uh, the year. Got Christmas coming up next week. Probably gonna be busy doing other stuff. Hopefully, like I said at the beginning of the video, that uh, after Christmas people will start getting rid of their old crap. So I'll have some what I like to call presents on the sides of the roads around here. All the rich people get rid of their stuff. I was gonna hook some speakers up, but it's done got too late. I don't wanna wake nobody up. But uh, there's your all 64. All 64 wave table and uh, all 64 16 bit sound blaster compatible. And these are a pain in the ass, these old Linksys cards. If you have any of these LNE 100 TX cards laying around, which who's using them anymore when you have Gigabit now, but. If you do still have any around, you'll have to get the drivers from like driverguide.net or somewhere because you can go to Lisa's site and you can look them up and they're there. But you can't uh, tell you that the driver no longer available. It's like, well, why do you still have it listed in the database? So, so yeah, P3800 still works. I would run some benchmarks on it, but. Getting this thing on the internet is a pain in the ass. I mean, it's just terribly slow. Like IE80 is the newest version you can run. You can put Firefox, I guess it's 52 ESR on it, but even that would be terrible. So, anyways, if you're looking to build a retro PC to do gaming on, you can find one of these boards. This is the BH6, Abit BH6. Um, I believe they made a, a what they called a BP6, and I believe that was the I believe that was the uh, socket 370 version that come out of like a year or two newer than that. So, but yeah, glad to see this old puppy still works. This was probably one of the best designs for a CPU. The, the cartridge loading it was really reliable. Never 
never had any problems with them other than the coolers, especially the aftermarket coolers. So I had one one day a customer brought, uh, I think it was this Pentium 2 in, and it was overheating and overheating and overheating. And I got to looking at it, I took a piece of paper, I took a business card, and I could put a business card between the heat sink and the CPU core. <laughs> between the, the heat sink and the die of the CPU. It was never making contact because whoever originally built the system didn't get the clamps on there correctly. So, <clears throat> gotta watch what you're doing with those. I've seen these get broke off, the retention clips that hold the CPU in. Uh, they made, if you really want to get crazy, they made dual versions. You get the P3 Xeons, you get the SMP versions. So, Anyways, I guess I'll uh, take it back apart and put it back in the closet. Maybe I'll get it out another year or two and dust it off. It's been sitting in there for many, many years. It's great to see that it still works. Alright guys, that's going to conclude this one. I will probably catch y'all sometime in the new year after New Year's Day.